Let's talk about the five traits that make a successful six-figure junior developer. Now, it's been really interesting in current rates. We're seeing a lot of React developer jobs in iOS and Kotlin, junior developers reaching the $95,000 to $105,000 range. Now, why is that? Well, the first thing we could look at is the fact that there are so many people flooding to this market, and the reality is there is not a lot of good developers. We have a lot of people learning how to code off of Udemy, Stack Social, all kinds of websites. But the problem is not a lot of people know how to work in a software engineering capacity, right? They understand languages, but they don't understand the mindset behind how to write clean, efficient code. A great way to think about this is just because I know how to cook spaghetti does not mean that I'm prepared to open a restaurant and sell it to everybody because quite frankly, it's not too good. Another way to think about this, just because you could follow a recipe does not mean you are a chef by any means. So let's add some context to this. What are the qualities that every employer is looking for in a successful junior developer? Well, let's talk about this. And I have my nifty iPad right here. So if you see my eyes shifting down, that's what I'm looking at. Well, first things first, and what makes a successful junior developer is that their code is easy to understand. It's documented very well. Anybody can come in and read it and say, okay, I know what's happening here. This makes sense. After speaking to hundreds of students, almost everybody struggles with, right? If you are not working under a mentor or haven't had somebody actively looking at your code on a daily basis, this is likely a problem of yours. Now, the next factor is how organized is your code, right? Good developers, good junior developers have extremely organized codes. And this is what I had to say about it. Your code doesn't contain a massive amount of dependencies, right? So dependencies, what does that mean? Let me give you a vague example here. Let's say you were to make a change to the interface, right? The user interface of your web application or mobile application. Would that then re immediately require a change in the database? In some circumstances it does, and that's poorly written code. Now this is a, uh, a great example of what the three core concepts of what employers are looking for. They're looking for someone that can write code that is maintainable, that is easy to change and can scale, right? If you have a lot of dependencies within your code, it can't do any of those things, right? The more you write, the more problems it's created. You're creating this Frankenstein monster that's just gonna turn into an absolute chaos bolt whenever you start scaling more and more. So we really need to be mindful of this, okay? So second quality, are you well organized? Do you think about these things before you code? That's why it's important that you learn it in a project-based learning system that doesn't force you to learn in a very specific time period. And that's why you need a mentor to look at your code line by line to give you actual feedback. The next step here is you use meaningful naming conventions, right? So again, this comes back to the factor. It's easy to understand. People are coming into your code. They see that it's well organized, right? They see that everything is named perfectly. So for example, when you're using variable names, are you using X, Y, or Z, right? No, you don't do that when it comes to creating variable names with JavaScript, for example. You're using names like, okay, this is the username, like whatever you're talking about, but you're not using vague names. You're using names for everything and you're leaving comments on how things work, not what they do. That's what you're doing. You're leaving code that any senior developer can come in and realistically understand and leave comments on. And the last factor here is your code is well tested. So what does that mean? Think about it right? You test it out before you send it in for review. You take your time to check all the different browsers. Can it run on every browser? Is it mobile responses? Is it responsive for tablets? Is it responsive for all these things? Uh, does everything function appropriately? When they submit forms, does everything go where it needs to? What happens to the data? You, you think through these things like a developer would. And we really, we really want to tie this back to the ultimate factor. These are the three factors that we will consistently talk about, and they are the only things that matter. They're the only things that matter for a programmer. Number one, can you write code that is easy to maintain? Number two, can you write code that is easy to change? And number three, can you write code that can scale? 
in the initial part portion of your career, that's going to be really hard. And these three things you develop, you don't immediately understand them. It takes experience. If you do all four of those things, then you move on to the third portion. Life just gets much, much easier for you. So that's what I want you to think about. Now, if you would like to learn how DevSlips helps our students with all of these things, this is what you can do. There's going to be a link in the bio of this video. Click on that link and schedule a call with our team and let us help you along this path. Let us help you figure out the career path that is best for you based on your goals. Let us help you figure out and show you how mentorship based project learning is the way to go when it comes to learning programming. Uh, thank you so much for taking time to watch this video. Don't forget, follow us on all of our social. We have frequent giveaways and things along those lines happening there. I'll talk to you guys later.